Welcome to chapter three of data manipulation in Python, where we're going to be talking about and coding up stuff to visualize your data. We're going to break this down into the most basic plots and the ones that are generally applicable to 1D distributions. We'll then look at how you can investigate two dimensional distributions in your data and then how you can generalize those into higher dimensions. First up, let's jump straight into the code talking about some of the most basic plots that you'll ever see. So this is less a, wow, look at these interesting styles of visualizations, and more a, let's make sure we're all on the same page and know how to use matplotlib, pandas, and seaborn in the most basic ways before progressing further. Alrighty, I've jumped straight into a notebook here where we're going to be using the same heart data that we used in the previous chapter, at least to start with. You can see we've imported pandas, matplotlib, and seaborn, and I've loaded in the data frame from heart.csv so we can jump straight in. As I stated before, this is more a getting everyone on the same page. If you are comfortable with plotting and you understand the differences between these different libraries and how to use them, feel free to watch this at 50 times speed. But for now, we're just going to run through the basics to make sure that, you know, I don't lose anyone. To start with, bar plots. Super common plot, everyone's seen a million of them. You can make them in a few different ways. So to try and keep things a little bit interesting though, because this is a bar plot, I'm going to use a function that we're not going to talk about for another couple of chapters called group by to essentially spice this up. But before I do that, just have a little look at our data. You can see in here we have age, sex, and CP. CP is chest pain. Uh, the higher the number, the more painful the chest pain is when you're having heart issues. So if we want to break this down, and let's say look at the uh, median or mean chest pain and, and by age. So uh, this is easy to do. What we can do is come here and just say chest, oh boy, I pressed the wrong button. Chest underscore pain is equal to data frame, and then we're going to use group by. Uh, don't get caught up on this. We will go over how to use this uh, in the future. And I'm just going to say hey, group by chest pain. Uh, I'm then just going to ask for the median values. Uh, if I run that, and then just print out uh, chest pain down here, or at least the first five rows, uh, well, there's only four. You can see chest pain is now down here. It's on a different level. That just means it's part of the index. Again, we'll get into that later. Uh, I'm just going to move it around by calling this, and you can see it's now a column again, but we have now the median value for every column grouped by chest pain. So if we took all the chest pain zero people and then found the median age, it would be 57. Great, but let's plot it. So like I said, there's a few ways. The easiest way is to use pandas inbuilt library. So we just go chest pain dot plot, and then we can go dot bar, and we'll just say, you know, the x value is the chest pain, and our y value is equal to age. Uh, you'll notice the semicolon here. If I don't do the semicolon, you can see it's printing out what this actually returns. So plot.bar returns an axis. So it's showing you that, hey, there's an axis here. I just want the plot. Semicolon suppresses the output. You can see it suppressed the output line from that axis, but it still shows the plot. Now, of course, what if we don't just want to see the age? We can take all of this, come down here, and just get rid of this y value. And you'll see it will plot everything it can. So for chest pain, you'll see that it's plotted every other column. Of course, because the columns record different things and are on different scales, this isn't that useful a plot. But if you do have data that's all homogenous, all talking about the same thing, this can be super handy. If we wanted to do the matplotlib version of this rather than the pandas version, that's easy. We can go fig ax equals plot.subplots. I always use plot.subplots to get a figure and an axis. Uh, it's super handy. I'll go into it more later. Uh, we'll go ax.bar and then we'll just go chest underscore pain and we'll get the chest pain. We'll get the age for the next column and then uh, we'll just put a label on this just to make it handy. And then I will set the x label to be chest pain and uh, just tell the legend to show up. It's like, oh, semicolon. So you can see it looks relatively similar to the one before, but it did take us far more lines of code. So if you use matplotlib, more control, but more code. I'm hesitating to spend more time on bar plots, so let me just copy and paste some code in here and run you through it really quick. If I run this, you'll see that we can do a few other things. You can specify the color for the different uh, bars that you see. Um, you can specify the border color, the edge color there. There's a whole bunch of ways that you can do this. If you're fancy, you can even get the color to correspond to the height so that you can add another layer of visual information encoded in the color. There's tons that you can do, uh, but I don't want to spend more than like a minute or two on bar plots. 
Which means I'll try and wrap this up by showing you how you can also use Seaborn. So Seaborn is built on top of Matplotlib. It has a whole bunch of handy extra functions. Let's just go ax is equal to, I imported Seaborn as SB. So let's go bar plot. We can then, uh, we can do this a whole bunch of different ways, but let's just say, I'll just go CP here. Oops, CP. I'll also say age. Um, I'll then say error color is equal to white. Uh, and the cap size is equal to 0 0.1, and the data is equal to the data frame, and if I run that, you get this beautiful thing. So one thing we should notice here is I've passed in data is equal to DF, not chest pain. So DF is everything we haven't grouped. Seaborn's doing that under the hood. So it's saying, what are all the ages corresponding to chest pain zero? Those ages have a distribution, which means that you have some mean value and some error. And that error is what's been shown in these error bars here. So we could have calculated this ourselves if we wanted to, but Seaborn does do a lot of things for you. So it can be super handy. And as you can see, just like bar plots, you can go through pandas, or Matplotlib or Seaborn, most other things have ways you can do all three of them through these three different libraries. All right, we really need to move on because bar plots are not that interesting and this is already taking too long. So let's talk about scatter plots. Obviously, super simple. If we go df.plot.scatter and we can just go, let's say, for example, age verse uh, T rest uh, beats. Okay, cool. If we plot that, you'll see that you get this beautiful little red scatter plot showing it. Notice the, the labels are already done for you. We can do a similar thing with matplotlib to keep the time of this lecture down. I'm just going to copy and paste the code in here. So what we're going to do is fig ax from plot.subplots again, and then we'll just scatter age versus T rest BPS just like before, but we can specify the marker, the size, the color is actually going to be the age, so it will create its own color up, black edges, and they're each going to be 50% transparent. If I run that, you see that's exactly what we suspect here. As the age goes up, so does the color change. Uh, we can put a color bar in here if we wanted, but I don't want to. We can do the same with Seaborn. Uh, I can go Seaborn.scatter, oh no, no underscore, scatter plot. It's just scatter plot. We can go again, age, uh, we can go T rest BPS. We can go hue, so that's their version of color from before, and just put in age. Again, we can change the size, uh, edge uh, color. I don't, I don't like edge color. I normally just turn it off. It's a stupid thing to have. And then data is equal to df again. Plot that. Forget the semicolon. And you can see once again, age is now determining the color, but it does have a different color map. This is viridis, and this is the purples one from Seaborn. All right, let's move on. That's a scatter plot. What about line plots? Just as easy as everything else. Let's again uh, use our nifty little group by trick. So df dot group by, but we'll group by age this time. Uh, we'll get the median once again, and then we'll just call reset index. Fantastic. Let's have a look at that using head. It's exactly what you'd expect. Obviously, there aren't enough people to have ages be smooth, like 29, 30, 31. We've got some jumps. That's fine. We won't take it personally. But we may be interested, for example, in the relationship between ages and cholesterol. So if we go ages.plot, uh, and then we go line, put in here age, put in here cholesterol, and then just plot that, you can see this nifty little trend. Of course, you can do multiple things in pandas. So if I come down here, this doesn't have to just be a single number. You can go cholesterol and uh, T rest BPS. If you plot those, pass them in as a list, you'll see that you get both of them. Again, this is useful for data that's on the same scale. If you have one data that's far greater than the other, you'll just see a line at zero. Not very handy. And just like every other time, we can come down here and do the same thing using basic matplotlib. Again, fig, axis, I'm just calling ax.plot. That's their way of doing a line plot. Pass in the data, you can specify here I'm doing dots, and the line width is very narrow. I could obviously bump this up if, if you're having difficulty seeing it, and you'll see it grow huge. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. Seaborn has a very similar syntax. Again, it's a line plot, age, T rest, BPS, and we'll just pass in the data, just like we've been doing before, and you get out essentially the same plot that Pandas gives you. All right, so let me just uh, throw in a recap here. This video has taken too long. So the ones we've gone through are bar, scatter, and line. Uh, they're super fundamental, but I expect that you're familiar with all of these already. You know what a bar plot is. You know what a scatter plot is. But hopefully seeing the different syntax that you would need to do this through either pandas, matplotlib, or seaborn has been useful and gives you some more tools in the future to customize and create plots exactly as you want. 
Now there is one fundamental sort of plot that we haven't actually covered here, and the reason we haven't covered it is because it is by far and away the worst method of comparing discrete data that humans have ever come up with, and I hate it with an absolute passion. If you want to know what plot style that is, I'll talk about it in the next lecture. I don't want to get into a rant right now, I'm trying to keep the videos under 10 minutes.